I'm Cosmas Chimwate Mrunga, uh, one of the elders of this community, the Ogie community of Kiapkitale. On behalf of uh, the Ogie community, I may try to let you know about this land and their people. Uh, this community has entrusted me and elected me to be their chairman of an, I mean, uh, an organization called Chepkitalo uh, Gear Governing Council, which its duties is to protect and conserve the entire territory of this Ogier community. As we sit here, this place is by name Kipkera Hill, which is in the midst of this land, the Ogier territory land. The area of this land is not definitely known, but its boundaries are to the west, River Rokok, to the east, from where we are, is River Swam. River Rokok to the west forms the boundary of Kenya and the Uganda. And that is where the territory of this community starts from. The entire Mount Elgon forest is inside the Ogiek land. So to the west, at the swamp, that is, it is boundary to the east, and that one borders again with Uganda. And then to the north is Mount Elgon Peak, Mount Elgon Peak, where the boundary of Uganda and Kenya is. So where we are now here is almost in the center of this land. To the west is about 50 kilometers, to the east is the same. So whatever we are seeing, you see as if you are seeing the horizon. We can't see its boundary. Because as you see across here, you see a ridge, you go there, there is another ridge. Then you go to that ridge, there is another ridge. So this land, as you may be seeing, we are in a quarter. This the Agia community currently occupies a quarter of this land. The other part of this land has been taken away by the government. One section to the east, there is uh, Mount Elgon National Park inside this land. To the south, there is a forest reserve, which is inside this territory. And then this place as we are st uh, sitting now is, has been con co uh, converted into a game reserve. And this land initially was a trust land. All those transactions were made without a prior concern of this community. And that is why this community sat and petitioned to the government to find out as to why they own this part of lands, I mean this part of the land. And at the same time as we are now, there is a case going on in the, in the courts. In fact, we are waiting for a ruling over the ownership of this land. And therefore that one needs a lot of help from outside and the friends who can assist us. We are prepared, if we shall lose, if we are, we, we, they are going to rule for or against us, if they rule for uh, against us, then we have to appeal. We make an appeal. We are, we are ready for it, and we seek help from other, uh, uh, another friends. Otherwise, the land itself is owned communally. This is the Gia community decided to own this land communally, not individually. One reason as to why we, we decided to own it that way, one, subdividing this land to, to, to individual uh, people of the community will subject this land into a hard way of managing it, a hard way of conserving it, a hard way of, of, of uh, controlling the use of land in this place. One, 
the natural activity or the, the historic activity of this community is hunter and gatherer community. We keep animals, we don't cultivate. And that is why you see this land is in its formation since time in memorial. As you climb up geographically, you could have started from shrubs, you enter into bamboo zone, you, you come into for, thick forests. Then from thick forests you come to shrub land. Then as you see to the north, towards the mountain, you can see now more land. Alpine grasslands and then more land to the peak. And then to save this thing, the community sat down using indigenous knowledge. Nobody was trained. We inherited the, the way our ancestors used to use this land. One thing. The most use, I mean the most methods or the most, the most way of our life fluid here depended entirely on one, trees. Why? Apple medicine, beekeeping, you collect nectar, I mean uh, bees collect nectar from the same trees. We get natural, natural hives from our larger trees for bees where we collect our honey, which is our traditional food. And now the history tells us, and the precautions are, there is nobody who is allowed to fell down trees for that achievement. For us to get a lot of honey, then we must preserve trees and the vegetation around. And that is why you see how the land looks like. The land is evergreen, except now if you can see it, you may wonder, this is now a dry season. You see fire sometimes having been spotted somewhere, but this is but those who are harvesting honey in these forests. So, in fact, this community has sat and derived methods by writing down, derived ideas from indigenous knowledge on how to upkeep this land. And today we have put in place laws that manages and governs the conservation of this zone. One, the laws and the punishable, punishable rules, punishable rules that we use when you are found failing trees, you are found burning uh, forests, you are found, I mean, dealing this land that is cultivation, you are found actually doing anything which is dangerous to conservation. As you see this land, this land has remained this way. You can, you can, you can see some, I mean, uh, some fields as if there are not trees. Those are called clades. Those are natural clades. You see them. It was there since time in memorial. And those are, but I think God created those fields for our animals to shelter. I mean, to, 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 to warm up themselves during rain season. This land accommodates all kind of nature. Wildlife and domestic animals. Unfortunately, by now you can't see them. They are now inside the rivers. Elephants, antelopes, buffaloes are just inside these rivers. So during night time they roam around and they graze with sometimes animals when it is rainy. On top of that, we are aware that. Every, in every single time, there are so many people who envy the way we stay here, the way we, 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 we uphold our land, the way we maybe protect this land, and the way we behave, actually, with the way we live. Our culture is quite different from others. This one is uh, uh, the, the land itself tells you how we behave because and how we uh, actually we depend how do we really get our livelihood you have seen some animals grazing around and those are about cows goats sh and sheep which is uh, one of the, the 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 farming methods we use in this place the community occupies the whole of Mount Elgon forest as such, and that is their land, and there is no subdivision 
the land is taken care of as a communal land and it has to remain a communal land for good for it is uh, i mean uh, care and the conservation of the, the land that one would have exposed our land into divisions which will be subject to selling herring uh, and many other disposals uh, uh, that one will invite a lot of different ethnic groups to this land that may bring here inside here different attitudes and ways of addressing land we are we don't allow that one because of only that don't want a foreign idea inside the, this uh, indigenous land indigenous community with the indigenous knowledge we don't want it has to remain a, a, a communal land and that one will be protected by community bylaws that we have. If subjected to individuals, that will mean everyone will have uh, power over what to do over the land. Inside this land, which has been uh, consecrated by, by the government and then given to Kenya Forest Service to manage, then from the forest station, you found now some cultivations, some, some exotic trees having been planted, some land cultivation being done there. That is where uh, the land, this land, the community land, the Ogie community land is being managed by the KFS. So the difference is that the KFS are not for conservation, but they are for cultivation. They are just here for cultivation, not for conservation. That is the difference between us and the KFS. So this one has been done forcefully. In fact, before, after, after, after the areas you saw have, uh, 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 undergoing cultivation, there is a region, I may show you when we shall be going down, where we had a conflict, serious conflict. We told them they should not pass there, they have to stop there, and then find the right owner of the same land. So, in fact, there is a very big difference. Thank you very much, but you saw you saw it yourself that you, they, you you have seen the difference from where we own and where they do, they also own. So that is the problem. That is uh, the difference. They, they have come in for cultivation. Uh, when when we talk about eviction, evictions were there since even when you are, I was not born, because wherever we talk about this land. This land stretches down the line up to Transa, but the evictions had been there. But the ones that I've realized myself are three major ones. One, we were evicted in, in, uh, in 1979. We lost a lot of animals. It was sold, and then others got lost, the government. And then there was another eviction that also became so serious, our animals were confiscated, houses burned, taken back again to the government. The last one which was so serious was 2016, which I personally felt it and my houses were burned, me personally. My children had, uh, had to suffer for six months, uh, living under a big tree, all houses burned, uh, my sheep got burned in the houses and uh, I personally sued the government and the case is in court. Nothing has been determined and I'm waiting for the verdict. And, uh, that one was a joint force that it was so serious. If we can even be there, we can, you can have a time to go and see, you can, you can find some remains in my home so many other things that got burned. Anyway, it is in record that I lost a lot of things. I lost about 24 sheep, 16 goats, young ones eh, in the houses. So that one was burned and it was on a, bread, a, day, a, a broad daylight, which was uh, actually operated by a, a mixed up force. So that case is in court and it is ongoing. So I don't know what will be the ruling. And anyway, to the, to the entire community, as I told you in the history, that we have suffered so much that even going to school, 
learning comes upholded because of eviction, development upholded by eviction. And these evictions, you are not shown, you are not directed, you are not told the mistake. They only say you are in a wrong place, that the land belongs to the government. You start thinking because you don't have an history, you don't have anything, but the real history you have is that my great grandfather, who died about 300 ago, was buried in Labod. My father, who died about 100 years ago, was buried in Labod. Me, I was born in Labod and I'm now 74 years old. Where is this home that they talk about that they want to take me to go and get it? So it's just something, a myth, that maybe it needs a lot of explanation. Because if this one is an ancestral home that gives us history, in fact, I had requested even for geological study to find out how long could we have stayed in Jepkitale? That is uh, something very true and it can prove that. In fact, it took me the other time that I wanted exemption from, from the graves of our forefathers. And if need be, I can even take uh, evidences from graves where our people used to stay, which is almost some, some, some thousands of years ago. So when they say this is, when they want to evict you from a home that tells you that history. And then uh, this one is somebody may be questioning God about nature because the ecosystem here, the ecosystem in Chepketale is human, wild animals and trees. And then what? So when they talk about the ecosystem in Chepketale or in Mount Elgon ecosystem, and then man should be included in the ecosystem, not divided unless they want to question nature. Exactly.